Hey guys, welcome to Action Reaction. So make sure to subscribe and like to my channel. Tons of content here in my channel. TV show trailers, YouTube videos, movie trailers, game trailers, try not to laugh challenges, gaming compilation videos, regular uploads. You can even ask me for what to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely subscribe and stick to my channel. You'll see a lot of content. So let's get to the reactions. Let's go. Sponsored by Brandon Yates. That's right, our Brandon Yates. The Chosen Undead, the accursed god killer from Dark Souls. The last dragonborn, the dragon slave savior of Skyrim. Resigned to captivity, these two demi-human heroes embraced their destiny and stared down the very gods themselves. And devoured their friggin' souls! Because there's two black specific cannon arsenals and movesets due to being role-playing protagonists, for this death battle we're giving them everything they have and maxing out all of their stats. Which is totally possible in-game if you're willing to grind. He's with my boomstick. And it's our job to analyze the weapons armor our story begins at the end. The great cities of old have collapsed. The heroes are dead or mad. And the golden age is over. Looking out upon their decaying kingdom, everyone would like nothing more than to lay down and die. Too bad for them! That's the one thing they couldn't do! The world has been gripped by the undead curse, turning anyone with a mysterious dark sign into mindless, violent hollows upon repeated soul-crushing deaths. But there is a prophecy of a chosen undead who will journey to Lordran, the home of the gods, and save the world. Rotting away in an asylum, all it took was an assist from an unlucky knight no and a giant raven before one unlikely hero was ready to claw their way through their progenitors And it helps that as long as they can keep their sense of purpose, an undead will always resurrect at the nearest bonfire. Now they might slowly lose their memories, their personality, and their sanity, but the curse gives them as much time as they need to get good. Undead are unnaturally resilient, able to survive being impaled through the chest. They've been chewed, eaten, and digested by what I can only describe as a toilet human. And they can have their souls torn from their very body, because undead humans don't need their souls to survive. Just pop some of that spicy sunny tea, and they're good to go. If anything, it seems like they get up to it. And speaking of souls, they can absorb the souls of their fallen enemies to increase their power. They're a master with swords, hammers, spears, axes, bows, you name it. And that's without any form of training. With the right stats and setup, they can be anything from a cartwheeling assassin to a dragon smashing to the giantest of dead! And despite the serious gothic themes of the series, these weapons can get anime as hell! Smoo's great hammer is a ginormous mallet the size of a sedan! Based on its size and likely bronze composition, it'd have to weigh over a hundred times. A lot like Goff's great bow, which can shoot pillar-sized arrows and one-shot dragons out of the sky. Or my favorite, the Moonlight Greatsword! Produced from the ass of the albino dragon and founder of sorcery, See the scaleless! This baby's a universe hopping anomaly that can fire powerful sword beams and just. God just looks so cool! The Chosen Undead has learned magic from the greatest practitioners in the world. They can create shockwaves, form defensive barriers, reflect damage, throw balls of flame, control minds, fire magical crystal spears, turn invisible, and toss bolts of sunlight strong enough to peel the stone scales off of mortal dragons. So their pool of magic is pretty limited. So if it comes down to it, they can shut off all magic in the vicinity with the miracle Vow of Silence, preventing anyone from speaking any spells. Allow, Ooh, including themselves. Yeah. With this incredible yeah. arsenal yeah. and judicious attention yeah. to the stamina bar, yeah. the chosen undead yeah. are pulling their way to victory. The world is so powerful, it bends the laws of space and warps them through attacks like they weren't even there. So sometimes it doesn't work in its proportions. That's just a game mechanic, but great to use when you're panicking. They've defeated Nido, the god of death, the bed of chaos, the mother of all demon kind, 
and Kalami, the strongest surviving ancient dragon. That was when the Chosen Undead was dragged back in time to face the fallen knight Artorius, the greatest warrior in history. And not only defeat him, but accomplish the greatest feat attributed to Artorius' legend, the destruction of Manus, the father of the abyss that threatened to consume the world. They've even beaten other Chosen Undead from alternate worlds, like the best buddy in all gaming, Salir! Praise the sun, bro! And soon they were approached by these two slithery freaks. One said to link the fire, and the other said to let it die out, which totally makes sense. Let's get explained it. Don't look at me. Dark Souls 4 is as notoriously convoluted as the flow of its time stream, which is why we have a true expert in the realms of nerdom to explain it for us. Oh, Jocelyn. <sighs> you wouldn't believe how many item descriptions, forum posts, and moody 2013 lore videos I had to watch through for this. It's story time, kids. In the beginning, the world was unformed and static. Then suddenly, the first flame burst to life. And with it, the concepts of heat and cold, life and death, energy and time, light and dark. Sounds like a mythological Big Bang. The gods were granted immensely powerful souls from the first flame. But their greatest fear was the soul possessed collectively by the race known as humanity, the Dark Soul. The Sky Father Gwyn feared humanity's immortality, and so sealed their Dark Souls within them. But as humanity reproduced, the Dark Soul collectively grew and the first flame waned. Turns out humans were naturally undying, or according to the gods' propaganda, Undead. Yes, it's all a conspiracy. Undead. The undead curse was a lie! Linking the fire means using your very soul as fuel to keep the first flame burning. If an undead champion believes their immortality is a curse, they'll do anything to prevent it, including burning fragments of the dark soul to keep the age of the gods going. So you're a pawn in a game played by decrepit gods desperately claiming power. Well, that's a huge bummer. They might look like a depressed California raisin, but in order to link the flame, their soul needs to be strong enough to maintain the whole universe and the flow of time for another thousand years. Other similarly powerful undead across time are swift enough to dodge lightning and even light itself. Based on their dodge compared to this beam and the time it took to reach them, they'd be reacting and moving at over 20% the speed of light. At the end of their quest, they faced down and defeated Gwyn, the Lord of Cinder, long hollowed from linking the flame a thousand years ago. So, which will you choose? Link the fire and prolong the current age, or let it fade until only dark remains. This is the biggest really? bummer of them all. Really? Truth is, it this never matters. The cycle just have? continues age after age with new life. heroes yeah, replacing the old ones the until time. the chosen undead was long forgotten. Until the infinite march of time ground the world to ash. It was never about the happy ending. It didn't exist. It was about the struggle to get there. That's ultimately what gives us meaning. Hey, you! You're finally awake! Welcome to the Frosty Viking Paradise of Skyrim! Visit the quaint Nordic villages! Hang up to the throat of the world! Marvel at the beauty of Black Creek! Hey, what's that in the sky? Wait! Watch your man, Randy Savage! No! It's Thomas the Tank Engine! No! That is a dragon! But not just any man, right? This is Alduin, the world of And he's come to burn everything to a cinder. But fortunately for you, his path of destruction happened to interrupt your impending execution at the hands of those uppity imperial pigs. That'll be the worst mistake this daily monster would ever make. It wouldn't be long before you escaped the destruction of Helga and defeated a dragon yourself. Then absorbed its freaking soul! That could only mean one thing. You are a being born with the blood and soul of a dragon in the body of a Nord. Elf or Khajiit or Lizard Dude destined to battle Alduin and save the world. In their tongue, you are the Dovahkiin, Dragonborn! In their quest to rid Tamriel of Alduin's dragon army, the Dragonborn became a jack of all trades, master of all. They learned to be a master assassin with the Dark Brotherhood, a master sorcerer with the College of Winterhold, a master thief with the Nightingale, a master dragon hunter with the Blades, and a master good boy who's a good boy. They even fought the Skyrim Civil War on the side of the Imperial Legion, Champions of Order. You mean the Nordic War for Independence on the side of the Stormcloaks? Those elf-funded Nord supremacists? Better than those jackbooted Cyrodiil fascists? 
But what else can I expect from a monster who steals from innocent villagers by sticking buckets over their heads? They can put your skills to good use with an absolute amount of weaponry. Not just the usuals like daggers, swords, hammers, and axes, but also special weapons given to them by the Daedric Princes. They're basically crazy powerful gods from the plane of existence called Oblivion. From that waskily wabbit Shiogorath, the Dragonborn received the Wabbadak, a staff that casts a completely random spell on its target, from disintegrating them to healing them to turning them into a chicken. From Meridia, they received the Dawnbreaker, a holy sword made for burning the undead type yeah, That's similar to Oriel's bow, which can shoot fiery arrows that can blot out the sun. To cover the distance between the Earth and the sun in about two seconds, the arrow would have to be moving at over 250 times the speed of light. Except this isn't Earth and the sun, this is the planet Nern, and that's Magnus. According to the Elder Scrolls lore master Michael Kirkbride and his in-universe text cosmology, when you look up at the sun, you're actually looking into a dimension of pure magic. Confused yet? I am. The exact measurements here are difficult to make, but if anything, the distance should be much greater. Speaking of magic bullshit, the Dragonborn can heal themselves, cast wards and destructive elemental spells, control minds, conjure weapons, and summon lesser Daedra to help them out in the scrap. They're an especially powerful mage because their mana recovers itself automatically over time. They'll never truly run out of firepower. But as a Dova King, the ability they're most famous for is the Thum, or Shout. By speaking the words of the dragon language, they can manifest their will into reality. Like with the classic Who's Runa! An unrelenting force which can knock your neighbors into next week. Or Soul Tear, which removes the soul from your enemy's body and stores it in a cute gem. Like so. Wait, why didn't anything? Oh. Oh! Student loans, man. Something had to come down. With these shouts, the dragon force can summon country spanning storms, slow down time, and even call upon a dragon for help. Odovan. Dragons may look like scaly reptiles, but in reality, they're immortal demigods older than time itself. They're the children of the chief god of Tamriel's pantheon. The Dragonborn is an unstoppable force of nature. If they happen to take any damage, they can just drink a potion or nosh on a cheese wheel and be good as new. And they can carry up to 150 cheeses at one by three. Assuming these abnormally large cheese wheels have an average weight of 70 pounds, we can determine that the Dragonborn can carry up to 10,500 pounds of cheese. And that makes sense, considering they can match muscles with giants who are so strong they can shatter the game's spaghetti coat to pieces. The last Dragonborn has battled the vampire Lord Harkon, ended Skyrim Civil War, and defeated the first Dragonborn, Mirak. And according to the book The Guardian and the Traitor, Mirak was powerful enough to tear apart the island of Solstheim from Skyrim's mainland. By comparing the size of various countries, on Tamriel's map, we can determine that Solstheim is a landmass nearly 1,500 miles in diameter. In order to move that much land over the course of their fight, Mirak's magical prowess must have output an energy over 300 teratons of TNT. That's three times the impact of the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs! Not too crazy when shouts can get strong enough to shake the world itself. It wasn't long before the Dragonborn confronted Alduin in Nord Heaven and put an end to the World Eater once and for all. Yeah, but that is literal. By absorbing the souls in Skyrim's afterlife, Alduin was powerful enough to devour everything. Not just the planet of Nern, but the Kalpa, the entire timeline past, present, and future. That's the level of unimaginable power the Dragonborn is dealing with here. Tamriel is no stranger to great heroes across its vast, sprawling history. The Nerevarine, the hero of Kavash, all magnificent in their own right. But when you heard that shout echoed through the mountains, and the death throes of a dragon defeated, you knew it could only be the Dova King. Dova King, Dova King! <laughs> uh, All right, the combatants are set from the data to all possibilities. It's time for a battle! And stop this fool who would let the flame burn the age of humans to ashes. The Ancients of the Dark will do anything to snuff out the light. Save us! Chosen!
was fascinating. The Dragonborn had a wider variety of training, better access to summons, and magic that passively regenerated, as opposed to the Chosen Undead's limited pool of magic. Val was silenced, was a slick counter to the Dragonborn's magic and shouts, but it wouldn't last forever. The Dragonborn was significantly faster, too. The Chosen Undead could dodge beams of light, sure, but Oriole's bow could fire arrows that move at least 250 times that. But none of that mattered if the Chosen Undead couldn't stay dead. You'd think the Dragonborn's anti-undead weaponry like Dawnbreaker would be an easy solution, but the undead of Dark Souls aren't really the same as Draugr from Skyrim. Skyrim undead are more like those classic reanimated skeletons. Okay. But remember the conspiracy. Humans and Dark Souls are naturally immortal. They're not actually undead. Soul tear wouldn't have been much use either, considering humans and Dark Souls can have their souls removed without dying. So why didn't the chosen undead just keep coming back until they eventually won? Like with any Dark Souls bug. One word. Power. The Dragonborn had way more and greater feats of raw power than the Chosen of Death. Oh yeah, like summoning country spanning storms with a single shout, or defeating Mirek who split a continent. There's also the lore. Both characters are essentially mythological demigods in the same kind of vein as Hercules or Sun Kong. Gameplay alone won't give you the best idea of their full power as characters. So, let's get an idea of their max potential from the lore. The Chosen Undead sustaining the first flame with their soul was insanely impressive. Considering the first flame is responsible for the core concepts of the universe, like energy and time, it's not a stretch to say it affects not just the planet they live on, but the whole universe. But that's nothing compared to the power levels in the Elder Scrolls. Let's compare the first flame to Alduin. 
Both literally run on the power of souls, and both can be directly scaled to our combatants. Alduin had strength to consume the universe! Not just Nerd, but the Kalpa as well! You know those planets you see in the sky? According to cosmology, those are actually separate, infinitely big planes of reality. Alduin was going to eat infinity, multiple infinities. In comparison, the first flame is powerful enough to sustain the universe and the flow of time, but it can't be infinite, otherwise it never would have faded to begin with. And that meant the Chosen Undead just wasn't powerful enough no matter how many times they revived. With that much of a difference in power, the Chosen Undead would eventually lose their will to fight and go hollow. It's not traditional, but it is a form of death in Dark Souls. The Chosen Undead was surely tenacity personified, but still wasn't enough to stand up to the Dragonborn's incredible skill, broken arsenal, and overwhelming power. The Chosen Undead could only last so long before they flamed out. The winner is the Dragonborn. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We have a new deck that will release every two weeks this year. Click the join button to get new perks and extra content. Play all the other members and you can see death battles before anyone else. So don't miss out.